The Breakfast Club is a new movie about teenagers. It's a story of what happens to five high school students. A brain, a beauty, a jock, a rebel, a recluse. They're forced to spend their Saturday together because they're all in detention. The 1980s John Hughes film, Breakfast Club, is a quintessential high school movie, if not THE quintessential high school movie. Somewhat surprising due to it only really showing one aspect of the high school. The library. The movie, situated with a bottle episode premise, an idea that the characters stay in one area for the entirety of the story, in other than brief intervals where we see very little of the rest of the school. It's a movie that enlists its minimal set to instead focus on character rather than space or spectacle. It is a youthful movie that in many ways resonates with high schoolers of today. It not feeling constraints to explore its setting, that being one all familiar with, the corridors and classrooms of a school. Allowing instead to explore the archetypes that exist within high schools, these archetypes of which we are all familiar. Hughes often praised for his ability to work within and take the perspective of children and those in general much younger than him. Born in 1950, he bore witness to the great heights of American integrity. He saw the moon landing, the introduction of the Concord, the period where America, after exercising its power in World War II, stepped into the limelight of the international stage. He considered the controlling world superpower. He saw public intelligence increase, and the buildings pierced the sky, everyone did, but he also saw and took notice of the beginning rungs of this ladder to opulence, education. The education system had to continue to keep up, the books were getting thicker, and yet children were required to learn more. Some were starting to question whether there was an extent to which we could allow the country's youth to pile on the work, to stay up later working, and to wake up earlier to catch a school bus. There were becoming, Hughes felt, a forgotten generation, under the development of the country, above them ignored until they graduated to be sucked into a growing workforce. I know it's kind of a weird time, but I was just wondering... What is going to happen to us on Monday when we're all together again? I mean, I consider you guys my friends. I'm not wrong, am I? No. So on Monday, what happens? Are we still friends, you mean? We're friends now, that is? Yeah. Do you want the truth? Yeah, I want the truth. I don't think so. The movie is their response, almost in that the uniting of a common group, the exhaustion of teenagers with their superficial world they exist within and participate within. Generations before them expecting the same of them, if not more, as teenagers in a time where they have to form character, attempt to explore experiences of life, whilst aware they're during the end of their own childhood. There's a statue throughout the movie, a piece of modern art, abstract art, that somewhat sticks out compared to the straight lines and blackness of the open rooms in which it existed. I mentioned it only because it could definitely be seen as a representation of what it is like to be a teenager. Their body, in many ways, is like they appear as adults. However, like the statue, their minds aren't as cultivated as adult, purely because they have lived less, they have seen less, experienced less. And then the arms, they have no power, ability really to do anything. As close to adulthood as they are, their parents still very much control over their lives. Hughes putting a lot of effort into the cast, looking for actors who seem not unlike their character in reality. He was late, I was waiting around, and Michael was there. Michael was in Catholic school at the time, and he had his, his blue pants and his shirt and his tie, and sitting there waiting for this guy. And the door, the office and empty, the door burst open, the judge came in, and his pants were all torn, and they had the same boots he wore in a movie at. And he was just like massing his bag, and he threw the stuff down. He said, I've been up all night on a plane. And he just turned right to Michael and started doing Bender on him. He was bang, bang, hitting a slab of Michael. And was gone in 10 minutes. He finished the scene, got up, and said, I see you later, I gotta get your plane. <coughs> I looked at Michael, and I said, uh, okay, I think that's the guy. In some way, wanting actors who had experienced the lives of their characters. You filled in a lot of the, his personal history. Is that all in the script, or have you, did you have to well, manufacture some of that? 
I think I, I played sports in high school, so I, I, I knew kind of what that team feeling is like and, and that pressure to win and that pressure to be the best and the fastest. And uh, so, so I was able to draw from that. Mm -hmm. Hiring young actors, the youngest at the time, Molly Ringwald, who was 17, because they still felt and understood the reality of childhood, wanting a rawness within their performances to understand the perspective of a child. Yeah. What about you? Fuck you! No, Dad! What about you? Fuck you! I'm proud to be a part of this because uh, it's been a real good experience. These kids are all very talented. You know, and I, like I said earlier to somebody, they're, they're better than adults. <laughs> a lot of them, you know, they've got great impulses. And acting is sort of a childlike uh, thing anyway. Um, you know, uh, the best actors, uh, not that they're children, or, or, or as Truman Capote called them, dumb, uh, but they, 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 they must have impulses, you know. They must be willing to follow their impulses, you know, in a childlike way, you know, to respond and to, to listen and to feel and to be sensitized. And these kids all are like that. And so it awakens my, uh, you know, my sleeping dormant impulses, you know, that I've somehow allowed to somnambulize in adulthood. And it's been good to work with them, you know. And, and uh, I, I just, uh, I just, I, it's been a good experience because John Hughes has, uh, has, has allowed us to, uh, to function, you know, and, and to, to, to participate and to collaborate. The understanding that a lot of it is waiting waiting for the next Christmas, next birthday, the next year older. Once you reach adulthood, you forget about the boring moments, you remember it as a time of freedom, because who could do anything without real consequences, whilst when you're a child, you feel trapped by the knowledge you, nothing you do will have any real effect, and really, you're just waiting to be old enough to do something. The movie trapped them in a detention hall, because that really just signifies where they are. They can exist, Please don't touch anything, please don't get out of the chair, just wait. Just wait to do something, just wait to do anything. This leading theme of the film is one that teenage years is being like a prison. The movie formatted much like a prison, with a warden and prisoners all working against each other, but together behind his back. Even referencing famous prison movie, Bridge on the River Kwai, whistling Colonel Boogie March, which is whistled by the soldiers entering the prison camp. being they feel trapped. Trapped by the view of themselves, by the image of the projection people put on them. They're trapped in a library, a room where people store books. The main public library has one of the largest and finest collections of research material in the world, a boon to the serious scholar. Books comprised of the most heartfelt moments in someone's life, their passions, their loves, their memories. The greatest writings, the greatest writings known in some cases, and all of it clasped, bound, labelled, organised, and put on a shelf. This very American need to organise, to judge art like sport, to get a scientific ranking, to calculate the next best thing. It crushing these children. They're emotionally ignored, presumed to be fined, and they're all pushing to keep going. This mindless machine that I can't even relate to anymore. Andrew, you've got to be number one. I won't tolerate any losers in this family. Your intensity is for shit. Win, win, win. In a system that they themselves in some way created, judging themselves, they want to be noticed so desperately, they want to be seen, but they don't want to stick out, knowing the rules of their social hierarchy and know the true repercussions of their actions amongst their peers, those their age. We accept the fact that we had to sacrifice a whole Saturday in detention for whatever it was we did wrong. But we think you're crazy to make us write an essay telling you who we think we are. And you see us as you want to see us. In the simplest terms, the most convenient definitions. They are seen on face value, judged, labeled, and organized into five categories. But what we found out is that each one of us is a brain and an athlete and a basket case, a princess and a criminal. 
Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, Breakfast Club. Hi, this is Luke. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.